I run mine with the customize all the time. We'll go to customize and there's where you get your shelf temperatures. Uh, 120 works for some things. Some of them I go up to 125, 130, 140. Adjust the cycle times. You could adjust this down to a different number. Candy you can do in two or three hours on some of the things after the freeze because you still need to get the chamber cold. That way any water that does come out doesn't go shooting into the vacuum pump. Okay. And then that saves those settings. Put run custom and it shows me this. And then start custom. And then it'll remind me to close the drain valve. I did. And then I'm going to continue. Let's pretend it's been about 30, 40 minutes and the chamber wall is ice cold. All I need to do to get past this freezing part is simply down arrow. You can also hit that clock. We're going to go ahead and jump to the next cycle and you do that just by hitting the little clock. A viewer that has a similar model of machine as this one. This is from 2017 and I'm running uh, version 2.4.3 on it and I've been real happy with this firmware. I had no plans to update it and of course now I can't update it to the newer ones. Uh, the machines themselves are different in hardware so the new software really isn't compatible with this machine. They asked about doing candy in this machine. Since it doesn't have a candy mode, what do they do? Or what do I do anyway? So they could kind of decide how they want to do it. So I'm going to go over with what I do when I'm doing candy in here. And it also pertains to a few other types of things that are very, very low moisture and like a redrying of something. It very similar. So like if we're doing dry hash browns, the box of dried hash browns can be put in here, dried even more for an even longer term storage without having the potential for um, the water causing a problem. Low moisture batches are a different thing than the regular batch and so they can be done a little differently. The main thing is you don't need to defrost between batches because there's so little ice on the chamber. As long as you don't let it warm up, you can just do another batch right afterwards. I pretty much always have run this in using the customized cycle. And it's kind of a manual cycle, but it still works essentially the exact same as the automatic cycle on this machine. The biggest difference is it shows me more information on screen while it's running. It still runs basically the same way. You get it cold and on this you tell it how long to freeze. I have it set for six hours freeze when I'm doing normal foods. With candy it doesn't need that much. When the freeze is done then it moves on to the main dry cycle. And on this machine that's 30 hours or when it thinks it's done. When it thinks it's done, then it jumps to the final dry cycle, which on mine I have set, I think, for 11 hours right now. And you can set it to what you think is right. 11 hours is almost never enough. I almost always have to add a few more hours. So I just start with 11 hours. That's why I run it in the custom is not because it acts differently but because it gives me a little bit more information on the display. The setup inside doesn't change no matter what I'm running or candy or anything. The only time I change it is if I'm trying to get video inside the machine, I raise this shelf up, the front of this shelf up, so that I can see in the next one down a little bit better. Other than that, I run it the same on the inside each time. One of the big differences between the new machine, like my sister's, that has a candy mode and mine, is it shortens the times a lot uh, because it doesn't need that whole main drying time. It needs some warmth to help puff that candy up. So it doesn't need that. Well, we can mimic that by just jumping to the next cycle. The reason you don't normally jump to the next cycle is because it's really important that the moisture that is sublimated out of the food gets resublimated 
desublimated, resublimated, um, turns back to ice on the chamber walls and doesn't get sucked through the vacuum hose and into your vacuum pump because that's what will ruin it. So it's important to have the chamber cold if you're doing things uh, with a lot of moisture. The other thing it does is, if I understand it correctly, when you have a vacuum and you have this super cold outside area and a warm area on the food itself, you're creating a pressure difference. Um, so you end up with a lower pressure out here and a higher pressure in here and that moves that moisture out to the chamber to freeze. The other part is that the candy is usually done at a higher temperature. Part of that is just what are you after when you're freeze drying your candy? Things like Bitto Honey does, has done really great in ours at 120, 125. Uh, but some things need a higher temperature. And then what do you want? Do you want a big puffy piece or do you want it just to blow up a little bit? For instance, I like my gummy bears to go just maybe two, three times the size, but I still want them to be recognizable as a gummy bear. If they get too warm, they blow up and they just look like a, I don't know, kind of a cotton candy, just a, a ball of sugary crushed things. And they're very, very fragile. They're pretty neat looking, but they're not what I'm after. So you have to decide what you're after and you'll have to do some experimenting with the temperatures of your tray to find out what gives you the results you're after. So we'll get to the controls. Again, I run mine with the customize all the time. And this will go to customize and there's where you get your shelf temperatures. So for candy, again, 120 works for some things. Some of them, I go up to 125, 130, 140. So you can go up to higher temperatures. It has a limit on this machine of 150. I don't think I've ever used 150 on this machine. Um, we usually use for candy somewhere between 120 and 140. It just depends. Okay, and then adjust the cycle times. So we have our freeze time set for six hours and our final set for 11. And because you can jump to the next cycle or lower the numbers uh, at any time, I don't worry about the fact that I have this set for six. If I only need three, I can simply down arrow. But if you're going to do a bunch of them and you don't want to have to think about it, you could adjust this down to a different number. I'm going to leave it for six right now and then we'll see it when we start it. Okay, and then the final dry time, again, it really won't matter for candy because that's going to be way too much. Um, candy you can do in two or three hours on some of the things after the freeze because you still need to get the chamber cold. That way any water that does come out doesn't go shooting into the vacuum pump. You can adjust these to whatever you need. Okay. And then that saves those settings. And then when I'm running, I put run custom and it shows me this. And then start custom. And it'll remind me to close the drain valve. I did. Okay, and then I'm going to continue. Okay, it's telling me right now that my temperature inside the chamber is 58 degrees. And I have a thermometer in there that's touching, the, the tip of the thermometer is touching the chamber wall down there. So that way I can tell when the chamber is cold enough to continue. For candy, I don't really need to worry about the tray temperature. On my machine, the 58 is telling me what the temperature is. Way back there on the, on the bottom of that second shelf up. So way back there. Oh boy, that's kind of hard to see it but right back there is that little bump there's a thermistor a temp temperature probe under there so my plan was to pretend that I have stuff in there 
but it's hard to show how they puff up when you're pretending there's stuff in there. So instead, I'm going to just let it keep cooling, and then I'll come back later and find some candy and put in there. So it's going to end up freezing longer than it needs to, but that's also not a problem. And then I'll get enough candy for at least a tray. We'll do a tray, and then we can show how to do another one right behind it. I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so it's about 28 or 29 minutes. So it's chilling nicely. So don't go away. I'll be right back. Uh, be a couple hours because I have other things I have to do, unfortunately. So I'll be right back. So I'm finally back to get this thing started. It's been freezing now for just over three and a half hours. And as I mentioned before, for this kind of batch, it doesn't need three and a half hours. It just needs enough to get that chamber wall all the way cold. And all the way cold to me is a minimum of 40 below zero. And it can tell that by having the thermometer touch the barrel. On my software, I can trust the tray temperature to an extent after a while if there's nothing in there, uh, which is what I have right now. So I'm going to use some candy. I, I borrowed a set of my sister's trays and some of her candy because I didn't have any and my trays are already loaded with other stuff. Okay, so we're going to do a small batch, just a couple of trays worth, and they're not going to be filled, but then we can see what they do and that might be useful. And because I'm using the seal that was originally off hers, my disc didn't fit in there and that's a lot more water than I ever see on mine. Even if it's sitting here for 10 hours, it doesn't get that much anymore. So that disc makes quite a difference, which is a side issue from the candy completely. But I saw it, I wanted to mention it. Once it's under vacuum, this disc doesn't make any difference really. There's no air to transmit the heat through here and, and have this happen. The thermometer on the side says, a little bit lower than 40 below zero and the thermometer only goes to 40 below zero so anything beyond that is not trustworthy the displays temperature is reading negative 55 right now and that's probably pretty accurate because again the tray temperature is being taken way in the back of the machine this thermometer is about three quarters toward the front and mine freezes from the back toward the front so it would be warmer in the front and the way that they've done the new one, like my sister's, hers freezes from the front toward the back, and that's probably a good idea because you're having more heat loss in the front, so you would want more cooling in the front. That makes a lot of sense. Now, we'll get the trays loaded and then get them in there. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to do a few pieces on each of these trays. This is just uh, saltwater taffy, I think. It does some really nice stuff, and you can cut them in half. You don't have to leave them whole. These get pretty big, and they're also pretty good, except for the ones that have mint, and I don't know which one. That might be that. Oh, yuck. That one's mint. So. And I do have parchment on the trays, and that's certainly not necessary. I just find it easier for quick cleanup or for doing the next batch right away. I can even lift this and pour it into bags. But it's a stainless steel tray. It doesn't have to be lined with anything. After you do a certain candy, you'll get a feel for how big they get. These will get about this big, so I need to leave spacing. So I wouldn't do more than maybe three or four across on these because they'll blow up pretty good size. Gonna do a bunch of Bitto Honeys. This is a candy that is so much better after it's freeze-dried than before it's freeze-dried. Now we've done a bunch of these where we've left them whole. Uh, we've also done them cutting them in half or even in quarters. They'll get probably about that big around and about that long so they'll get pretty good size so you don't want to crowd these either you don't want to crowd most candies especially the first time you do a specific candy because you don't know how big it's going to get 
if you put too much on there, like the first time we loaded up a whole tray with mini marshmallows edge to edge, they started popping over the edges. As I said, I'm not going to load them very heavily. Next, we're going to get them into the machine. There's as many options on how to do these parts as there are results that you're going to get. Every change is going to get you something slightly different. The top and bottom spaces are, tend to be slightly cooler than the middle two, and the middle of the tray is slightly warmer than the outside edges. So the candies toward the middle of all the trays are going to tend to get a little bit bigger than anything on the outside. The trays in the middle are going to tend to get a little bit bigger than the trays on the top and bottom. Because these have so little water and we're trying to make them puff up, we don't have to worry about freezing them. But we have sometimes frozen them like marshmallows and things because we don't want them to over puff. So you have to kind of experiment, but we'll get these in there and then move from there. Oops. And I'll try to get some shots through there. I'm going to move these a little further forward. Usually for photo or for video, I move this rack up so I've got a better shot through there, but I didn't do it this time because I wasn't planning ahead for that. Okay. Oh yeah, I still can't fit that in there. That's interesting that that does not fit in there. The drain valve still closed. We're going to just bypass the rest of the freeze time. And normally there wouldn't be almost four hours. It didn't need to go that long to get what was needed, which is a cold chamber. Um, an hour, maybe two hours would be enough for pre-freezing. You just make sure that that thermometer that's touching the chamber wall gets down to 40, like negative 40. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just down arrow, vacuum is running. Now, I'm not going to jump to the final on mine until it gets down to uh, the 500. So with my older software, the heaters will turn on if I go to the final right now. So I'm going to let the pressure go down first and then we'll jump to the next cycle. I wanted to get to below 500 before I went to the next cycle. It's below 500. Let's take a look at the candy. I added a little light right there so I can see into there. So again, we haven't started to add any heat yet, so it's just under vacuum. Okay. And then uh, to jump to the next cycle, because normally this would go for 30 hours or until it thinks it's dry enough. And because it's so dry and so little, it would jump to what's called a small batch cycle. I think that's what it's called, uh, but we're not gonna let it. We're gonna just go ahead and the heaters are on, so it is trying to heat it up now, but we're going to just jump to the final dry and you don't have to. The heaters are going to start cycling on and off right now, trying to drive off moisture to raise the pressure. And obviously it was able to raise the pressure a little bit, but it's not going to raise it very high and it's not going to stay up there. And so it's going to cycle back down. So you can just let it do this and it will slowly heat the candy or you can jump and the heaters are going to stay on and heat up the candy quickly. And that's definitely going to make them expand more, so it depends on what you want. We normally let it go through part of this before we jump, but we have jumped this way too. So I'm gonna wait until the heaters turn off once before we jump. And I can tell that the heater's on because the pressure's rising and because I have the whole thing plugged into a power meter. And so I know when, it's, uh, when the heaters are running, it's a little over 1,200 watts that it draws. 
So it's going to keep the heaters on, trying to drive it up over 600. If it can drive it up over 600, then the heater will turn off. If all the trays were filled with candy, it would have enough moisture in all those candies to drive the pressure up pretty quickly. But since I only have a dozen or so, it's really struggling to get that up there. Okay, now it's 600, and the heaters have just turned off. Uh, the power usage has dropped down to 520. We're going to go ahead and jump to the next cycle, and you do that just by hitting the little clock. Yeehaw! And then on mine again, you saw that I had it set for 11 hours. It doesn't need 11 hours. We can get rid of a bunch of that. And so right now the heaters will be on. I'm going to see if we can get this up by the door and just let it watch while I go have dinner. You can see the taffy looking wonderful and the bit of honeys. Let's go back up. This is part of the decision making. Are you happy with what they're looking like? If you want them to do less, you could have used a lower temperature. If you want them to do more, you could try a little bit higher temperature. Now, they've only been in there for about a half hour, so there still could be moisture in there. Uh, it's not going to affect the storability, they just might get sticky still. So I usually leave them in for longer than this before I take them out. Um, but on these we might take them out so we can show the next part of the process. We'll give that a few more minutes and then we'll go on to the next part. One of the questions is how to know when it's done or how to know when to take them out. Um, they have extremely little moisture, so as far as safety and food safety, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to really worry about them. The thing that kind of determines it is what you're after. If you want it to be all crunchy and everything, you might want to give it another hour or so, because it's only been about 45 minutes, because it just doesn't take a long time. Uh, we usually don't babysit it because we don't care about how long it takes so we let it run uh, the short batch cycle and it takes quite a few hours in fact we usually just do it overnight and then the next morning it's ready but you certainly can do it batch after batch and get multiple batches the batch after this one since the machine is already cold the next batch could be done an hour hour and a half from now I mean, it'll be very very fast Another thing to consider is that the candies right now are about 120 degrees, so they might be pliable. So one of the things that we do is, on my older machine, the last 15 minutes, the heaters are off. With my sister's newer machine, and so her newer software, the heaters can be on right till the end, so you have to go till it's finished to get the heaters to turn off and have it start to cool. So usually for candies and marshmallows and camis pears, we'll let them cool without the heaters on, but the vacuum still running to make sure that they're not too pliable. So with that in mind, I'm not going to jump cycles. I'm just going to use the down arrow and get it down to the last 15 minutes. And actually it's gonna be a little less than that. Okay, and then I'm going to let it cool here. Okay, and it says the tray temperature is 115, and you can add thermometers to each tray, so you'll know what that specific tray is to make sure also. So I'm letting that cool for about 10 minutes so that it will be less likely 
to be flexible still. Some things are flexible when you first take them out if they're all sugary. I don't know if these would be because usually we give it more time because we're really not in a hurry to do it. And I really wanted to get it down to 80 or 90 degrees before I pull them out to make sure that they're very solid. The temperature dropped down to 91, so it's cool enough. I think we can open it up and get these out and check them. I'm just going to use the down arrow. The way we do it is we put no defrost, customize, start custom, and continue. Let's get the candy out. So because of the lack of moisture in this food, um, we don't have to worry about defrosting. You could do, I think we've done uh, marshmallows have a lot more water than the candy does, I think, and we've done eight or ten batches in a row of them because the chamber can hold a decent amount of water, but you don't want it to build up if you don't need it to be on there, you know. So you don't want to go overboard is what I'm saying. Uh, for back-to-back -back cycles, I would defrost it if there were three or four pounds of water. I wouldn't wait until it's anywhere close to the max of eight. But that's a lot of candy. Uh, you can take uh, do a lot of candy with that amount of water. So we'll open the drain valve. So what I was afraid of. So a couple of these in front did collapse. And that's one of the reasons I would like to let it cool. And I should have given it more time. Uh, that's one of the things you'll get at trying to rush it. As I said earlier, we would normally give it two or three hours, not 45 minutes. Uh, to make sure and then let it cool a little bit like that but let's check it out and see how they fared yeah that that tray is still pretty warm okay we'll get this closed so the walls can keep cooling yeah this is still warm so would have been better to have given them a little bit more cool time Okay, the bit of honeys. Freeze-dried bit of honey is one of the best. So these were still a little warm when I took them out. Plus, I think the saltwater taffy tends to have a little bit more moisture, which is, again, getting back to what I said, that normally we do a few hours. We don't do this short of a batch. Well, this one's cinnamon. Yeah, so this is still going to be chewy at this point. Yep. So it was not enough time for that one. Oh, that's good. So that fast seemed to be good enough for the bit of honeys, but it wasn't long enough time for the saltwater taffy. And they needed some cooling time or additional cooling time. Um, but mostly they just needed more freeze dry time to make sure that the rest of the water was out of there. I think this is a pretty good example of what I was saying about, it depends on what you're after. If you want them to be completely crunchy like these, well, these happened that quick. These have more moisture and they're going to take a little bit longer time. But if you want them to be puffed up and chewy, then this is still perfect. Very good. Okay, the thermometer inside touching the barrel says that it's negative 20 right now. So we want to wait until that gets back down to negative 40. So it just be a few more minutes. So that'd be ready to put the next batch in, in probably about 30 minutes. Well, that's still dropping. You can get the trays emptied and bagged and then the next set on the trays and ready to go in as soon as it's chilled enough around the outside of the barrel. And you could put them in there earlier, but again, the candies really don't have to be chilled. It doesn't hurt them. It slows down the process and they won't get as big all the time but it doesn't hurt them. Right now we just want that chamber wall to get cold again, which as I said before is to make sure that the moisture doesn't end up going through the pump. And this method only works with super dry things. 
So candies, marshmallows. I don't even think I would do this with rice or hash browns. And, and I'm talking about uh, dry, like minute rice and the dry hash browns because those would still have a lot more water in those than the candies do. So anything that has a lot of water might end up going through the pump and that's a problem. You don't want that to happen. So as soon as it's cold enough, we can just down arrow it to get it restarted and then use the little clock thing to jump it back to the uh, final dry cycle as soon as it's gotten below 500 millitor. At least that's what I like to do is let it get to low pressure, especially with my firmware, which would automatically turn on the heaters at the same time also. So I'm making sure it's cold first. These have had a little while to cool. Now let's check them and see what they're like inside. The taffies are still a little bit pliable inside after cooling because they really needed more time but quite good. The bit of funnies are just dry as can be inside. For our candy, I would probably let it freeze for a little while uh, so that it is a little bit slower process. And then when it first starts the main dry cycle, I would let that run for half hour or an hour to start driving off the moisture. I think it tends to end up more even inside. This worked well, not a big problem. So you have to experiment with how you like them to see if it makes more sense to let the candy get cold for a little while and then let the main cycle uh, run for a while before you jump to the end or if you just jump to the end. So the rack temperature still says nine degrees. I'm not really worried about the rack temperature for the candy because we're not worried about any free water need to be frozen. So at this point, you could just get it started and with the freeze time remaining you can down arrow or you can just hit the so hit the clock and it's going to go to that next cycle so right now there's no candy in there um, you know this is demonstration purposes only so the way we would normally do candy is we would let it go ahead and run on this main dry cycle for a while it's automatically set for 30 hours or until it thinks it's dry enough. So it would end up in a, a small batch cycle and it would just take a few hours. I would let this run for probably an hour or two hours because it's going to be cycling the heaters on and off, which will slow down the drying process, which I think will make the candy more even inside but I haven't tested it a bunch both ways because we really haven't done that many batches of candy. Uh, all of, most of what we did was all at once in a big rush uh, for the kids. Other than that, you can just jump to the final dry. Once the pressure's down, you can jump to the final dry and let the heaters turn on. They puff up very quickly, a half hour, an hour, and they're, they're about done. I would still let them go a total drying time of at least two or three hours to make sure that they're not chewy on the inside. And then let them cool for 15 or 20 minutes while it's still in there, but on that final cycle, and again on mine it has the last 15 minutes, my sister's, it just turns off the heater after it says it's done, but I want the vacuum still running. And so that's why I, I did it that way. And then when it gets down to just the last minute or two, I bump it back up to 15 so that it just keeps running that last piece without the heaters on until it's a little bit cooler. And this time it was still a little bit too warm. It would have helped if I'd had a thermometer setting on each tray like we do with normal food. So then we would have known that tray temperature instead of relying on the display because I took it out and it was a little too warm. Still worked out well and they still taste good. If you're happy with how they look by just jumping to that last part of the cycle, the final uh, dry part, then you wouldn't even have to turn it off. So right now you've taken the batch out, you're happy with it, you could put a new batch in and then press more dry time. It'll tell you to close the valve, continue, and on mine it'll say that the pump is cooling 
but I've got a fan on it so I don't worry about that. And then I just press that. And then it's back into there. And if I want four hours, so if I want to do four hour batches of candy, I could have it go for four hours. And that might be more than needed. You can test each type of candy and find out how long. And then that'll just run until it's done. And after those hours are done, it's going to run out again. And if you wanted, you could take those out, put another batch in, and just put more dry time. So there's two real simple methods to run back to back. The one is to, after it's finished, to stop with no defrost and then immediately restart. The other, and, and that gets you all of the other cycles. So that's the reason we do it that way is that way we can get to that main dry cycle that's turning the heaters on and off uh, so that it's more gentle as it starts to dry. If you're happy with just simply heating it like the candy cycle really would, don't stop it. Take the batch out, put a new batch in, and just hit the more dry time button and add the number of hours you want to run it again. You can do batch after batch that way, just as simple. And for some candies, that's probably the best way where it really needs a lot of heat quickly. Not everything needs that amount of heat. So you have to decide which ones work that way, which ones work the other way. Uh, so there's two ways that you can go back to back pretty easily. I hope that helps. Let me know. Thanks.